So thanks for joining us, ladies and gentlemen, on this beautiful Saturday afternoon. I hope that the sun is shining where you are. So this is You Are The Manager. You've joined us on Forge From Iron. I'm Gatesy, and in the hot seat today is Mo. How are you, sir? You there, Mo? I'm good, you? Yeah, not bad. I, I'm not too sure what, what happened there. Oh, I'm good. Hmm. Oh, dear. Mo, get... Get somewhere where the Wi-Fi is a bit more stable, mate. You, I don't know what's just happened there because we was talking fine before we hit go live and all of a sudden your Wi-Fi seems to have gone a bit funny. You still with me? I think you're on mute. No, I've still, it's still silent from this end, mate. I can't hear a word you're saying. Hmm. I do apologise about this, ladies and gentlemen. This has all gone a little bit pear-shaped, a little bit quickly. Whilst Mo's sorting himself out, Mo, if I was you, come out and come back in. Try that. Yeah, I don't know if you can hear me. Right, okay. So, to give the people that are watching two minutes in and we it's all gone to pot already, hopefully it will get better than this. Um, so, Mo's in the hot seat. Mo is David Moyes, essentially, in the summer. So, Mo has got £85 million pounds that I have given him out of the goodness of my heart because I'm, I'm nice like that you know i give money to charity mo here's 85 million quid do what you want with it and he's going to go out and ahead of our campaign next season in europe in the premier league and domestic cup competitions his task if you will is to go out and strengthen the squad now um he's obviously dropped off stream so I don't quite know what's going on. Apologies. You know, I, you know, what can I do? Um, <laughs> if someone's internet's playing around, it's beyond my control. So luckily, luckily, I'm, I'm going to go with this. And if Mo doesn't manage to come back, then I'm just going to have to, you know, put this one down to experience. So you guys that are watching, he was here. And he's, then all of a sudden, his internet started playing around. The stupid thing was, we was chatting before I hit go live for about 10 minutes. And his internet was fine. I could hear him perfectly. No problem at all. His internet has disappeared up its own backside. How you doing, Luke? Hope you're well, mate. So you've, you've just walked in when it's all gone to pot. What do you do? So anyway, look. I'll, I'll, I don't know what's going on Mo's end. I've got no idea. I've not had any communication. So I'm just going to check my phone to see if he sent me a message on Twitter. No, nope, nothing. So I don't know. He's got a problem with his internet. This is good, isn't it? Okay. So I'm just going to go with this. And if Mo turns up in the meantime, hey, how you doing, Jake? Yeah, this has all gone belly up. The, the guest, his internet has died. I don't know why. So... Luckily, I do know the players that he selected. We had a chat beforehand and I, I know the players that he selected. So this is not quite as. But if his Internet's playing around. Yeah, uh, Luke, I agree. I agree. But I can't do anything about, you know, his Internet. You know, if he's got sort of Poundland broadband, what do you do? Ah, oh, look, there we go. Here he is. I hope it's going round and round. Mo, are you there? Talk to me.
Mo, can you hear me? Hmm. Well, it, this is this stream's probably got a little bit of comedy value, if nothing else. <laughs> um, yeah, you you could obviously hear me, but we can't hear you. I've just got you in the private chat, Mo. Um, and you may well hear me, but I cannot hear you. And I don't believe anybody at home can if I can't. So, yeah, my problem. Yes. Yes. Which is brilliant. Um, it was working fine before we hit go live. So but it's entertaining. It's entertaining for the people at home. So what I'm going to do, Mo, is I'm going to go through your selections. And if you want to pitch in on the private chat, if you want to sort of give the people at home your reasoning for why you've picked the players, I'll read it out. We're just going to have to do it like that. Or, or alternatively, um, you put it in the live chat so you can interact with the people that are, that are here. Yeah, so, sounds okay. If you can hear me, then just give me a thumbs up, mate. Yep, you're nodding. Okay, that's great. All right, fine, no problem. So, okay, now I know that your first choice of goalkeeper, Mo, I'm going to get him up on screen, is uh, this gentleman here. I'm just going to get rid of that banner because otherwise it will get in the way. So your goalkeeper that you selected was this young man, Alphonse Ariola. Now, he's a Paris Saint-Germain goalkeeper. However, he spent last season on loan at Fulham. So according to Transfer Market, he is rated at £13.5 million. Now, obviously, we know Transfer Market is not necessarily going to be a real-life valuation. This is just for the purposes of this particular series. It's a bit of fun. No big deal. So he's a French citizen. He is a goalkeeper, age 28, spent last season on loan at Fulham, as I say. And just looking down here, he had 36 Premier League appearances. He conceded 48 goals and kept nine clean sheets. He is also um, a dual citizenship. He's also a Filipino citizen, little known fact. I didn't actually realise that until a little bit earlier and I picked it up. He is a client of the super agent Mino Raiola, and he is on contract at Paris Saint-Germain until the 30th of June 2023. He has three caps for the French national team. He's also been at the books of Real Madrid, Villarreal, Bastia, as well as obviously Paris Saint-Germain and Lons. Um, so, yeah, so that's the goalkeeper that Mo has gone for. Now, obviously, if Mo Moyes um, brings him in, then his budget of £85 million shrinks by £13.5 million and goes down to £71.5 million. So that is his goalkeeper. Mo, are you, are you, have you managed to sort your sound out yet, mate? No, your lips are moving, but I've got no sound, mate. I've got no sound. So, OK, um, it is what it is. So, yeah, let's have a look at the uh, the chaps in the live live chat. They're probably having a good old giggle at this. Um, yeah, not maybe you have some Somerset smashing us again. Yeah, I'm, I'd take it. That's cricket, is it, Luke? Um, for it is he signing Maguire. Well, he might might well do. Um, Jake, listen, mic problems. It is what it is. You know, it is what it is. Um, Ariola, Jake says he's a great shout, Mo. Um, he thinks that's a good problem. He's, he's just saying he's, he's got mic problems, which typically um, happened just as we hit go live, which yeah, I'm waiting for Jeremy Beadle to come out. It, it is really. Um, yes, it is. It, it is, Luke. And Ariola, that is exactly correct. You are right. Um, he, he's right, Jake. It, it, that is um, the little bit around the nipple is called an Ariola. There you go. So there you go. So that's his goalkeeper. And that's taken his budget, as I say, down to 71.5 million. How will Mo cope? Oh, I really don't know. But anyway, so that is his goalkeeper. Now we move on. Now, the next player that he brings in now. Um, oh, hang on. Left back at Bolin has just asked a question. What are rules regarding loans? Well, he can loan players if he wishes to. But to be fair, Mo hasn't decided to take that option up, but you'll you'll see as we go along um, left back at the bowling. So, OK, 
Now, the next player that Mo has decided to bring in, and I suspect that when I bring this player up, there'll be a, a sort of like a little bit of a recoil because of this player's um, past connection, shall we say. Um, but listen, it's it's Mo's stint in the hot seat, so he can pick who he wants. He's got the money to burn. And if he wants to bring players in that maybe you or I don't, you know, think we want to see at Up, uh, Upton Park, oh, I, 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 do you know, I keep doing that. I keep saying Upton Park and it, we've, we've been gone there five years. Anyway, so I'm going to hit share and this player is Mo's choice. He wants to bring in, yes, Kieran Trippier, ladies and gentlemen. Kieran Trippier from Atletico Madrid, the former Spurs player. England international, as we know, he is 30 years of age. He was He's born in Bury, up in Lancashire. Um, his contract at Atletico Madrid goes until the 30th of June 2023. Transfer market have rated him at £18 million. He made 28 appearances in La Liga last season. Didn't score a goal, but as a right back, that's not really his job, is it? Um, he did manage to register six assists and obviously they won La Liga. So pretty impressive. Um, he is obviously, as I say, he is a right back. But he can be deployed as a right midfielder, don't you know? Um, and just looking down here, obviously, he's got um, previous with Spurs, Burnley, Manchester City, um, Barnsley, you know, has, is on his resume. But more importantly, he's played 27 times for the national team. He has registered one goal. And we'll all remember that goal because it was in a World Cup semi-final against Croatia, which unfortunately... We didn't manage to turn them over um, and we went out. But there he is, ladies and gentlemen. So £18 million. Now, if we subtract that from the £71.5 million that Mo had, he's now down to £53.5 million. So that's his second signing done, ladies and gentlemen. So just looking here at the... Um, at the comments whilst I've been rabbiting on, a titting goal like Roberto... Yeah, it was an open goal for you, Luke. That was obviously going to be where you were going. Um, and uh, yeah, Jake, Mo's choice. Listen, if he wants to put an ex-Tottenham player in, it, it's entirely up to him and he can justify it. I'm sure if he could, um, you know, if he can sort of put in, in his reasoning in, in the live chat, you can pick the bones out of it. And 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 Jay, uh, Dale as well. Yeah, Trippier, um, see how he does for England in, in the Euros. Yeah, I mean, you know, I actually think he had a really good World Cup, but that's now three years ago. Um, but he he won. He's part of a team that won La Liga, so you know he, he's done okay in the last twelve months. It has to be said. So we, we we won't talk too much about the the betting sort of issues. We'll keep keep that sort of like to to one side. So the next player that Mo has on his list of players to bring in. So I'll just share this with you, ladies and gentlemen, um, is a player that we are being linked with or had been linked with. But it seems to have cooled off a little bit um, for one reason or another. So want to get the Jesse Lingard deal done as their priority. So, you know, once they know what they're going to be shelling out on Lingard, they'll know what money they've got left to play with. Whether the door of Thomas Socek and um, Vladimir Sufal. His name is Alex Kral. Now, he is 23 years of age, and he's currently on the books of Spartak Moscow in Russia. He is rated at £9 million, according to Transfer Market, and his contract at Spartak Moscow runs until the 30th of June 2024. So just looking down here, he's got 29 league appearances last season. No goals, but again, that's not really his job as a defensive midfielder. But he did manage to register five assists. He was in the starting 11 for 93% of the time, playing 89% of the minutes. As I say, he's a defensive midfielder by default. He can also be deployed in central midfield. Or he has a bit of versatility about him. He's got 16 caps for the Czech national team. And he's registered two goals. He's also got caps at under 21, 20, 19 and 17 levels. So, as I say, he's Spartak Moscow at the minute. Previous to that, he was a teammate, again, of Socek 
and Sufau at Slavia Prague. Um, yeah, so that's that's pretty much all to be said about this guy. As I say, the interest on him seems to have called of late. That doesn't necessarily mean that he may not still come through the door, but it, you know, obviously, it seems that the powers that be have got other things, or other other priorities at the moment. So. Nine million pounds. Now he had fifty-three point five million pounds. So if my maths is correct, he's now got forty-four point five million pounds left in the kitty. So that is Alex Crow through the door. So next cab off the rank, as it were. Now this is a player. It's in a bit of Premier League. Actually, before I get to this, I'll just go back to the to the. Um, to the guys in the live chat. So there's Cyber. He's saying, I would have taken Tribiase. He can do good defending as Balbuena left. Okay, fair enough. Again, that's that's his justification for it. Um, pick the bones out of it. Um, afternoon. Oh, quick little break for Chef. Hello, Scott. Yeah, Cyber's having problems with his mic, with his internet. It's all gone a little bit pear-shaped. It was absolutely fine until I hit start broadcast and then it all just disappeared up its own backside. So I'm just rambling on and trying to sort of fill it in as best as I can. Um, it's probably quite amusing for you guys watching, but for me, I'm like, ah, oh, for goodness sake. But there you go. It is what it is. Um, so Cyber's there. Also, he can play in Diop's area if Dawson is injured. Yeah, okay, fair enough. If, if that's what you wanted to do, Mo Moyes, then, you know, that's not... A problem brilliant okay so yeah hello um psych problems otherwise i would have been don't know what went wrong you and me both mo you and me both but it is what it is we'll just carry on at the end of the day nobody's died although i feel like i am <laughs> there you go uh cyber literally did a mic drop you luke yeah dropped it broke it yeah, is what it is. Dale, Czech game versus Croatia is on earlier on the same day as England, Scotland. So we were watching that game to see how our boys and Alex do or does. Yeah, I, I'm with you, Dale. Absolutely. You know, I, I think I, I think it's going to be I think we're going through and I think it's between Czech Republic and Croatia. I'm not too sure that Scotland and, and Geo is going to kill me for that comment. I'm sorry, Geo, if you watch this. Um, but but then again, I mean, I, I understand in uh, two of the groups, I think, the way they've done a facility where the third place team can go through, I think, in two of the groups or one of the groups or something like that. So but there you go. Anyway, I'm rabbiting on. So the next player that um, Mo wanted to bring in now is a player. This guy is a striker and he's a Premier League striker, ladies and gentlemen. So. Here he is. So the next player off the rank is Patrick Bamford of Leeds United. There he is, ladies and gentlemen. Now, looking at him. So he's 27 years of age from Grantham in Lincolnshire. He is rated at 16.2 million on transfer market. Now, his contract at Leeds United, actually, as of the 30th of June, only has a year left to run. So... Leeds are in a bit of a spot. They've either got to sign him up to an extended contract or move him on, or they're going to lose him in 12 months for absolutely nothing. And in these times of COVID, I really don't see that clubs can allow that to happen, you know, because they've had their finances absolutely ruined by this last 14, 15 months or whatever. So he's either going to have to sign a new contract or they're going to have to get him out the door and get some money in, whether they like it or not. So anyway, looking at his Premier League stats last season, he made 38 appearances, so he didn't miss a match. 17 goals, 8 assists. He was in the starting 11. It says they're 97% of the time, so obviously one of those appearances, or at least, was a substitute appearance. Uh, but he played 90% of the minutes. That's pretty respectable, I have to say. Now, just going down here, his main position is obviously a centre forward. He can be deployed on either wing, though. I didn't know that. He's obviously an England under-21 international. However, he is also an Irish citizen. So he could, by the looks of things, play for the Republic of Ireland. Just looking at his history here. So obviously he's in the books of Leeds at the minute. Prior to that, though, he was on the books of Middlesbrough, Chelsea, Burnley. He had a loan spell, 
Um, he's also been on loan at Norwich, at Crystal Palace. You get the idea. He's he's done the rounds, you know, Milton Keynes, Dons. So, yeah, he's he's well-travelled and he's got good experience. He's got a season under his belt in the Premier League where he's managed to score a decent amount of goals for the games that he's played. And obviously the, the team is not one of the top six teams. So, you know, maybe his chances would be a bit more limited than they otherwise would be. But so Patrick Bamford is the next player that Mo's going to bring in. Now, unless I am very much mistaken, let's see how this goes. Mo, have we got you? Yep. Hey, Hello. hallelujah. Well, <laughs> there we go. Now, so I've managed to get through. Yep. So do you want to, before we move on, um, Patrick Bamford, do you want to talk to me about your reasoning behind bringing him in? Uh, he's such a talented player. Reason I'm mm -hmm. saying, because I know we've got Antonio, but for example, Antonio gets injured about literally every season, like one or three or four times. Mm -hmm. I'm saying we go yeah. for Patrick Bamford because he scored like about what's again 14, 13 goals this season, and I'm and I've got to say Leeds in the are Premier League so he's good got this 17 season. and eight assists. That uh, that's the player I would take from Leeds. Mm. Oh, yeah, I mean, Jake's saying oh, it's a good shout, listen. but he doesn't reckon they'll sell him. But as I said, Jake, he, you know, they might have to because he's only got 12 months left on his contract. So, no, but as listen, I say, I they, like, they either sign him up. I was, I was torn between two people. I was torn between hmm. Adam Armstrong and Patrick Bamford. Yep. And I'll think, and I, I wanted Bamford because I like Adam Armstrong, but he hasn't gotten that prem experience. And I'm sorry, mm -hmm. he won't score that many goals. Yeah, no, fair enough. I, I think experience in, in Premier League terms is is vital, and he's obviously got a season under his belt now. As I said before, you you came in, so I agree. I think that if if you were given the choice between Armstrong and Bamford, obviously Bamford it wins in the experience front. Probably the only thing I would say is obviously Bamford's what three years older, so yeah. And I don't, I don't get it. I don't understand how Bamford don't get, doesn't get into the England squad. Hmm. Yeah. No. It's a fair point. But then again, we know that that Southgate has his his favourites, which I think has been kind of illustrated by the fact that he's brought in Jordan Henderson, who's not played any football in months, but a guy like Jesse Lingard, who had <laughs> sixteen goals, nine assists. Uh, was it no nine goals, five assists, whatever it was. And Isn't apparently, squad, have you, you know, go figure. Uh, have you, have you heard this? But apparently, uh, Lingard. Uh, I don't know if it's true, but apparently, um, ex West Ham. Uh, they said that Lingard wants to sign for us. He wants to stay. Yep, yep. I've heard that one. It's just a question now of, um, you know, all the parties if... agreeing, you know, and and money being changed over. Because let's face it, he hasn't got a future at Manchester United. So I agree. He might yeah. have, but but yeah, he might have. Mm, but I don't, yeah, I, don't I, I doubt it. it. Yeah, I doubt it. So yeah, true. Mo, because like um, sixteen point two school. million. Sorry, so sixteen point yeah. two million off of your budget takes you down to twenty eight point three million pounds. So Mo, talk to me. Who's the next player you're looking at bringing in with that balance? Um. So I've got two million left. Yeah, yeah, you've got your lift with two players left to bring through the door. Um, we've had, um, obviously, uh, Ariola, we've had Trippier, we've had, um, yeah, who else was there? Uh, da, 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 da. Ariola, Ariola, Trippier, Bamford, and Crowell. Yeah, so mm. who, who have you got left? I think it was that. Uh, what's that? What's his name again? Uh, you got one. You the, got one's a striker. That, what's it? Yep. Yep. This fella. Yep. Um, so talk to me about this guy. I would spend all of it. I'm not gonna. What's his name? I don't. Oh, hang on. Uh, uh, Dakar. Yeah, I'll take Dakar. Yep. 
Talk, talk to me a little bit about him, Mo. I reckon we can get him as a good deal. Like I said, because uh, what's it? He's a good. He's a good. He can be a good. He can be a centre forward. For example, uh, you know, like uh, for example, for Antonio, like I said, for if we don't get Bamford, we we can go for Dakar. Right. And literally, literally. Yeah, and I'm saying I would. I like Dakar. He's he's, he's experienced, and I've seen him in. I've seen him the the other leagues playing, and he's also good. And yep. Yeah. And he's and he's a young goalie and he's a young striker as well. And I'd go for him. Okay, okay. So just to go through with the guys at home, just to want to want to have a little bit more meat on the bone. So just to go through this. So he's twenty two years of age. He's a Zambian international. He plays for RB yep. Salzburg in the Austrian Bundesliga. Now his contract there goes to the 30th of June 2024 and transfer market have rated him at 19.8 million pounds. He made 28 league appearances. Now this is ridiculous. 27 goals and seven assists. That is, I don't care what league you are playing in. If you've got more goal involvements than you've got matches played, you're doing something right. You seriously are. And the last player yeah. who came out of the Austrian Bundesliga who had a bit of a goal-scoring reputation moved on to Borussia Dortmund and he's still scoring goals, um, Erling Haaland. So, you know, I know people will yeah. say that the Austrian Bundesliga, you know, it's it's not that great of a league and they're absolutely correct. But, you know, that doesn't necessarily mean that every player out there is is rubbish. So his main position is a centre-forward, but he can be deployed on either wing. Um, as far as the national team for Zambia is concerned, he has 22 matches played and seven goals. So that's yeah. 19.8 million pounds you're spending on this fella, Mr. Manager. Yeah. Okay. So you've got 28.3 million left in your your back pocket. So nineteen point eight million pounds spent on Pats and Dacca means you are left with eight point five million pounds. So, Mister Manager, there's one more player I think you're bringing through the door, unless I'm very much mistaken. Yep, it's the defender. Okay, okay I'll just get him up on screen for you, Mo. Talk to me about this fella. Yeah, I'll would, I would take this defender. I'll take him. Okay, what's what's your reasoning behind that? Because, yeah, because you know, like like I said, how Balboina left. That, that's the same, and I reckon he can play for Balboina. Balboina's position. Okay, okay. Is this a fella that you've yeah, ever sort of cause, cause seen play yourself? What's that? Pardon? Have you ever seen this this fella this fella play yourself? Have you you ever seen him in dispatches? Anything? I've 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 seen him play in the Bundesliga. Okay, okay, fair enough. In the Bundesliga, no, well, no, no. What's again? La Liga, yeah, La Liga. Get her for you, La Liga. Okay. Yeah, what's it again? Okay. Sorry, about fair that. enough. Ms. So, so, so yeah. David Timor. Yeah, I've seen him. He's, he he does good defending. And I reckon, okay. for example, if Diop gets injured and, for example, if Dawson's suspended, we can put him in position. OK. OK. So just to sort of go through some of the finer details. So this guy's 31 years of age. He's by default mm. a defensive mid. He's currently playing for Getafe at La Liga. His contract runs on the th runs out on the 30th of June 2022. Transfer market have rated this fella at 1.35 million. He made 30 league appearances last season. Zero goals, zero assists. Again, that's not his job to score goals as a defensive midfielder, though. So that's not necessarily a true reflection on his capability, I would, um, I would wager. So his main position is a defensive midfielder. He can also be deployed as a central midfielder or indeed as a centre back. So has a little bit of versatility about him. And just looking at some of his previous clubs, as I say, he's at Getafe at the moment. He's played for Las Palmas, Girona, Leganes, Real Valladolid, Osasuna, 
um, and Valencia in his Valencia. days. Yeah. So, therefore, if he's 1.35 million, so as I say, you've got 8.5 million. So if we take 1.35 million off, that means you are left with 7 point one five million pounds so am i right in saying mr manager that at this point you're going to put the handbrake on the spending yeah yeah that's that's you done okay and uh just looking at the, the guys in the live chat yeah jake new name so you know it mo's sort of like he's he's thinking outside the box and uh yeah i mean we you know, we've had many players that have come through the door that we've never heard of before and, and they've come in and, and done a job. I mean, to be fair, who'd ever heard of Thomas Socek? I mean, most fans, if you just said Thomas Socek, most fans would have would have gone who? So, you know, um, same, it looks like a bruiser. Same as Vladimir yeah. Sufel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just because you've never heard of them doesn't mean they can't come in and do a job. So, you know, and as I say, this guy's got, a little bit of versatility and playing three different positions and fresh likes it. He says it's a nice pick. He likes these under the radar sorts. And yeah, I mean, Luke says no goals, no assists, yellow cards and a red. We need that just to destroy a never seen team. Although, yeah, I I've never seen the guy. I've got to be honest. I've never, <laughs> never heard of him until Mo's brought him up, but do you know what? Like I say, I've never heard of so I've never, I'd never heard of Sue foul. I'll be completely honest with you. When they rocked up at London stadium, I was like, who are these guys? But you know, it doesn't always, you know, being a name and, and being a sort of like an expensive player doesn't always mean all that, does it, Mo? Yeah. So just to recap your business then, Mo. So you've got your goalkeeper in Alphonse Ariola from Paris Saint-Germain. You've got Kieran Trippier yeah. from Atletico Madrid. You've got Alex yeah. Crowell from Spartak Moscow. You've got yeah. Patrick Bamford from Leeds United. You've got Patson Dacker from yep. Red Bull Salzburg, and you've got David Timor from yep. Getafe in La Liga. Yep. And you've got £7.15 million to give back to Mr. David Sullivan for him to spend however he sees fit. Maybe, maybe he'll maybe he'll give it to um to Isla's charity. Maybe he'll give it to Isla's charity or, or no, no, or no, no, listen, no, listen. No, listen. There's no way I'm giving it to the um, GSP. I, I don't know. <laughs> no, listen. You've got to give no, it to Isla. I'll give it. No. No, no, no. I'm going to give it to four charities that personally I know. Okay. Give him a shout out. This. I'm going to give it to charity. Give it to cancer. Oh, cancer research was that. Uh, did you get them? Yeah, cancer research. Yep. Uh, Isla's charity and yep. Iron's Food Bank. Okay. Yeah, yeah and I'm gonna give it to. Oh, uh, did you get them for? We got um, I got cancer research, Isla, mm -hmm. and food banks. What was the fourth? Oh. I think your internet's playing oh. around again. No. Yes. It's going a bit. Oh, dear. Listen. Yeah. I mean, Wi Fi problems. You're right, Jake. Wi Fi problems. It can always happen. And, you know, sometimes you just got to wing it. Um, now, Luke's asking me a question. Can I ask you to look at Teller at Saints? Mo can afford him and he's quick and powerful. Luke, for you, I will do this. Give me just two tickeroonies, right? I'm, we're going to do this on a recommendation from from Luke. I'm just going to let this load up. Mm, Nathan Teller. Now, here we go. Now, oh, oh, I'm going to share this with you, Mo. I don't know, sort of like whether you're still. But this is this is for Luke. Who's obviously a regular on the channel, so I like to try and give give my uh, my regulars a little bit of extra treatment. So hang on a minute, let me get rid of that. Okay, so Luke, this is for you. So Nathan Teller, I'll just go full screen with this. Hang on a minute, let me 
You just scroll down and just shut this geezer up because he's getting him on my nerves already. Okay, so Nathan Teller, there he is, guys. So he's currently at Southampton. His default position is a right winger. And he's under contract there until the 30th of June 2023. So basically, he's got another two years to go. Now, he's at the bargain price, <clears throat> same as David Timor, at 1.35 mil. Now, he made 18 Premier League appearances. He registered one goal and one assist. And he was in starting 11, 18% of the time, playing 22 percent of the minutes and just looking there he's a right winger by default he can also be played on the left winger he's citizen she's a dual national of both england and nigeria um and just looking here he's basically been um on the books at southampton for a good couple of years before that he was at arsenal and that's nathan teller on the recommendation of luke um Mo, would this be someone that might interest you? I think Mo's dropped out. I think Mo's Mo's internet has, has bottomed out. I don't know. Can you hear me, Mo? Nope, he's gone. He's he's left me hanging. He's left me hanging. What can you do? Anyway, we got to the end. That They were the six players that Mo selected. So he's got six players through the door. He's got £7.15 million, pounds, which he ain't going to give back to David Sullivan. He's going to donate it. And I got it in the private chat here. He's, he's given four charities. He's gone Cancer Research. He's gone Isla. He's gone um, the Russie's um, Food Bank's, Newham Food Bank's um, charity. And... British Red Cross. So, uh, you know, I know Mo's had a lot of problems, guys, with his internet, and it, it's caused a little bit of frustration. I'm sure that's regrettable. But to be fair, if he's going to give seven odd million to those four charities, I think we can probably let him off, to be fair. So there you go. Now, speaking of Isla, um, yep. Cheers, cheers, Mo. As I say, look, if, you, if your internet's dicking around, there's nothing you can do. I mean, unless you're some sort of Wi Fi wizard. It is what it is. Um, left back at the Bolin. So 85 mil on using transfer market. market. I'm going to give this a go. Says I'm fine. Tell you what, if you want to come on, right, you've got a ticker at the bottom, send us a direct message. If you want to come on, it's it's just a bit of a laugh. It's, you know, it's, it's not necessarily that these are players that we're going to see walking through the door at London Stadium. It's just if you were the manager, you know, that's the title of it. You are the manager, not who do you think David Moyes will bring in? But if you were given 85 million quid, what would you do with it? Who would you who would you bring in? Who could you bring in? Where would you strengthen? What are your priorities? What's your reason for bringing this play, player in? That's the whole point of this. It's just a bit of fun. And as I say, transfer market, I know that the price is on there. They're not necessarily an accurate reflection of real life. I mean, you know, for example, Alex Crowell was rated at 9 million quid. Well, the talk was that we were talking about getting him for 14 million. So I, I appreciate that the prices are not necessarily a real world reflection, but it's just a bit of fun. So do us a favor. If you want to have a go at this, if you want to come on with us one day, drop us a message. You've got us on Facebook. You've got us on Twitter. You've got us on um, Instagram. Probably the best place to do it is, is probably send us a Twitter message. I'll tell you the reason why, because I don't have anything to do with the Instagram um account uh, i leave that one to do that's all down to him the facebook and the twitter i do them mainly duke does have access to them as well but it's mainly me so probably the best bet is if you want to do it dm me on twitter and like i say we'll, we'll sort a time out it normally takes about an hour give or take depending upon how many players you've got and sort of like you know all the rest of it um luke uh, I tried it, tried to get Greedish and a load of journeymen. Um, Luke, again, if you want to come on, drop us a message. You know, you know how to get hold of me. You've you've got my email address as well. Um, as DMs on Twitter and all the rest of it. Mate, if you want to come on, do it. Let me know. Um, we'll sort you out uh time and we'll uh we'll go. We'll uh we'll do it. So but yeah, yeah. So that was Nathan Teller for you, Luke. And uh yeah, I've I've seen him play. Interest. Um, Cyber's just come in and said uh, he's going to Duke's next week. His pub. 
tell him to give me a discount. Listen, it's, it's nothing to do with me, mate. I, I, I can't tell him what to do with his pub. You can, you know, you can chat that one over with him. I've got nothing to do with his pub. That's that's down to him. That's his baby. But um, yeah, any of you guys that are watching, if you want, if you want us to get involved in this and just have a little bit of fun, and hopefully your internet's a little bit better than Mo's was when we hit, and and that was a really annoying thing is that sort of like we was. I, I got I normally get the people on the stream um ten minutes before I start. Just to have a little chit chat and, and touch base, make sure everything's all fine and all the rest of it. And everything was going fine until I hit start broadcast. And then start broadcast and it went <laughs> so there you go. Um fresh. I'll have to pop in once I get my ass in gear. Yeah, listen, and for those of you watching that are wondering where the hell Duke's pub, let me just get the banner up for you because Duke's Pub is that one there. So any of you watching, if you're ever in the vicinity of Blue Water Shopping Centre uh, and you're feeling a bit thirsty, maybe even a bit peckish, and you're thinking, hmm, pub lunch, something like that, try that out. Give that place a go. Um, obviously, with COVID and all the rest of it, there's still a lot of, you know, social distancing and they've got to have a limit on the numbers, blah, blah, blah. So you might be best to go onto the Green King app and book a table. It's six maximum. Um, you've got to, you know, do your hands when you walk in, wear a mask when you're not at your table and blah, 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 blah. But, you know, yeah, that's the world we're living in at the minute, guys. So, um, uh, yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, fair enough. Yeah. Um, anytime you want fresh, as I say, ticker at the bottom. You've got all of our um, communication methods as far as social media platforms is concerned. I'd suggest doing it on Twitter. So, yeah. And Cyber saying, yeah, nearest station, Stone Crossing. That's correct. Yes. You come out of Stone Crossing and you just basically go up the hill. And, and the pub straight in front of you, basically, uh, when you get to the top of the hill, more or less. Um, so for those of you that are still watching, I'm going to do my usual sign out. So any of you guys that are watching still, or girls. So that there, young Isla, you know the story. She's fighting for her life against neuroblastoma. No treatment in this country. Family have got to take her abroad to get the experimental treatment that, fingers crossed, is going to save her life. Now, think about this. We're all going through it in these troubled times of COVID. But this family have got to deal with a sick child and they've got to also find the money for the treatment to save her life. They've got to pay for the flights to get to and from wherever the treatment is. They've got to pay for their living costs whilst they're there. Um, they've got to pay for their, you know, accommodation, food, all the rest of it. And the bills are still piling up in the UK. I mean, guys, if you think you're having a hard time, magnify it honestly this family are absolutely going through the ringer now all of that information that i've got on that banner is underneath the video on youtube and on facebook okay now if there's only one thing you do for me and if there's only one thing you do for this family if you can't donate money then copy that and paste it onto your facebook onto your twitter onto your instagram and any other social media platforms you've got along with a little bit of an explanation as to what it's all about just keep putting the message out there okay we need to keep the momentum behind this because time is critical if you can put any money in the pot even better you've got a just giving link there it used to be a paypal but for reasons i know not um and it's none of my business that's now off the menu so it's just the just giving page now guys so that's where you need to put your money. Um, if there's anything you can put in the pot for this family, whether it's a pound, 10 pounds or anything at all, please do. And I thank you very much indeed for your time and your patience, not only for listening to me doing my normal end of stream um, banging of the drum, which I make, I'll make no apologies for that, actually. Um, but apologies, obviously, for the kind of, you know, Bish, mishmash of, of how this thing ran but as i say it, it was yeah it, it was one of those things uh and don't forget as fresh has just reminded me thank you very much fresh um that don't forget the hashtag forged goals for isla okay duke myself 
and Andy have agreed that for every goal that England score at the European Championships, we will donate a fiver each. So for every goal that England score out of us three, Isla's getting 15 notes. Now, there are some of you I know that were watching on the award ceremony on uh, Chew, you would do your own thing, whether it was going to be the same as us, more than us, less than us, whatever it was. But th I, I then kicked this out on, on the, the Twitter page, Falls From Iron, uh, at Falls Talk. Um, and as I say, if there's any of you guys that, that want to get involved, you know, and Cyber's just jumped in and said that he's going to donate two quid, mate. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Um, but yeah, let's, let's, let's get this trending on um, your, your Twitter. Do the hashtag forged goals, the number four Isla. Um, and like I say, let's let's try and let's try and put some, some let's try and do some good cyber. As fight in the description below the stream on both Facebook and on Twitter, there is a just giving page. If you go to that, that's where you put your money, okay? Um, yeah, no, it's it's not PayPal anymore, mate. It's um, you, you have to do it via just giving. Um, and if you can't do it, you know, I'm sure you can get someone in your family that that can help you there. Um, so, and Fresh just coming in and say at the end of the award show, vid the count was seven at five pound per goal. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's 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 going to be some some serious dough that's going into the pot and as i say you know if if we can even if someone turned around and said i can't donate 5 pound a goal because times are tough i'll donate 50 pence i'll donate a pound whatever it is it's better than nothing and if we can try and get the message out there on that hashtag and luke you're an absolute gentleman mate appreciate it thank you very much um you know and fresh just said 35 pound per goal um you know, I hope they win every single goal, three, uh, every single game, four, three. You know, that'd be absolutely fine. You know, if I lose 20 quid a game, you know, with the greatest of respect, what is, you know, to me, and I don't mean to be flash when I say this, but to me, 20 quid's not going to change my life. But for this little girl, that's massive. And if we could all chip in, whether it's 50 quid, 20 quid, a tenner, five pounds, whatever, if, you know, Let's, if we can try and put as much money into this girl's pot as possible and try and tip the odds a bit more in her favour than what they are right now, so much the better. I would say 10 pence a sideways pass, but I might lose my house. Yeah, every chance, every chance. And fresh, yeah, let's, let's try and get it up to £100 a goal. Um, you know, like I say, the the more the merrier. Sort of, you know, let's let's try and like I say, you guys that are watching, um, either live or at your own leisure. But I'm specifically talking to you guys in the live chat right now. Um, as I say, I'm sure you've all got social media platforms. You know, um, do the forged goal for Isla um, hashtag, tag us tag us in it. You know, at forged talk, and like I say, let's let's you know. And if you've got lots of other friends that you've got that are West Ham fans, as I say, tag them in on it. Tag, get them involved. And even if they're not West Ham fans, if you just tell them what the story is, then, you know, um, let, let's try and keep the momentum going. And Cyber Leader agrees with you. Um, can you send me something in the post? Um, yeah, if you want to, mate. Or, I'll tell you what, probably the easiest thing. I'll tell you what, easiest thing to do, if, if this is something for Isla, okay, um, probably the easiest thing to do um, to save an awful lot of mucking around is just send it to Duke's pub because there's someone there all the time. So that would be the easiest thing, mate. Anyway, I am rambling on a little bit now. So I am going to call it quits there. So, um, and Luke's just come in and says, as you know, I have zero social media profile. Mm, yeah, yeah, but whatever, mate, whatever. As I say, more the merrier though i mean you know just let's just spread the spread the message and um like i say let's let's try and come together and do some good hopefully england win the euros hopefully she gets a barrel load of money that's donated off of the back of this and you know it gets her the treatment and and she can knock this horrible disease that she's having to deal with at such a tender age 
on the head and and live her life the way that a child should be living her life and not having to worry about you know and 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 her parent worry and stress i just couldn't imagine it guys i really couldn't as a father of three just don't even go there anyway i'm going to hit my end broadcast i'm going to hit the credits and then i'm going to hit end broadcast and then i'm going to carry on with my saturday afternoon as usual guys though could you do us a favor drop no that's the wrong one that's the wrong one so you can't get the stuff i wanted to do this one yeah drop a like on the video subscribe to the channel Channel gone as and when do can I upload any new content? You will be notified as to its presence. Are you really cyber? Hmm. Never been there. Don't know. But um, yeah, so that's say drop us a like. Um, and as I say, apologies for Mo's internet basically being a complete pain in the backside. Nothing I can do about that. It is what it is. Um, but we we got the message out there. We knew we know the team that Mo wants to put out there next season if he was in charge and was a 7 million that he had left, he's donating it to four different charities. So like I say, if he's going to do that with seven odd million, we can let him off with a dodgy internet. Anyway, I'm going to let you guys crack on with your Saturday afternoon. Stay safe. Only one thing to say, come on you irons. <laughs>